Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 22, Hidden Preparation The well-dressed noble guide sat in the meeting room. Before him on the table, he had several thousand pages of plans for construction, relation, and supply. The Sun Princess had requested the late meeting with him because she wanted this situation resolved as soon as possible. Despite that, Celestia was late. Celestia was never late, unless the world was ending or if there was an invasion. He thankfully remained in his drug and force calm, as his mind worked the puzzle. He had not seen anything in motion, so he had two theories. The first was that it was another banished foe returning. The second was Twilight, the master blood mage, making her move. This meeting had to go well. He had no way of moving forward until he had all the necessary official paperwork. <sighs> Why didn't I leave some of my slaves to watch Twilight? He berated himself again. All of his current sufferings could be traced back to his overconfidence. He just sat there waiting, letting his mind drift back over the last week, trying to spot if he had done anything that could have given him away. Smoky incense drifted in the air of the dimly lit room, two braziers burning with a green flame, tainting all of the colors in the room. The robed dark mage slowly entered the room, on guard for any trickery. It had taken a lot of bits and burning of his two contacts to even get this meeting. This had to go right, or his destiny would be set back years. Before him, the tall, elegant unicorn mare he was here to meet lounged on silk pillows, each as black as her coat. With a motion of her head, she tossed her vibrant, almost toxic green mane aside. She turned her gaze upon the dark mage. It wasn't the gaze of a pony, her eyes held hunger, the desires of a hunter. She was even considering whether he would be her meal this night. She leaned forward. So... What do you want, little pony? Her sensuous voice dripped with the most alluring honey. He could feel the magic brushing against his mind. I'm not here to be seduced by vermin. He thought, reinforcing his mind. It was trivial to call on his dark magic, letting the mind magic run into a solid wall of hate. He reinforced his defenses with determination and guarded it with his guile. A nasty smile graced his muzzle. I am here to trade, not to become one of your puppets, changeling. My... You are well informed for a pony, she said, all hints of the seductress banished. The dark mage tipped his head respectfully. I ask again, what do you want? The changeling inquired a tone that was now all business. He trotted into the room, sitting down uninvited on a pillow opposite of her. I require three things. First, is to acquire the identity of a certain pony for myself. Second, the use of some of your trinkets to suppress only blood and dark aspected magic. And third, I require your vaunted skills of persuasion to encourage some ponies in need of homes to move where I want them to. Is that all? She snorted. And what do you think that you have to offer me that can possibly be worth all of that, pony? He retrieved a vial of thick red liquid from his robe and held it out on a huff. Her gaze narrowed on it. And what is it that you have there? She asked. It was hard to keep the grin from his muzzle. He could see the way her eyes tracked it hungrily. Fresh alicorn blood from one twilight sparkle. He hated trading away some of his irreplaceable resources, but he had more than enough. Assuming it is authentic, as impressive as it is, but you still need more. <laughs> if you come through, I'll provide you with a sample from her ovaries. He answered with a feral grin of his own. All perfectly preserved like the blood and magical stasis. The temptation was evident in her eyes. He knew that he was playing with fire, offering such a boon to the Queen's changelings. It was quite a risk. He would have to deal with a more powerful brood once he had claimed his rightful place. Her horn lit with green magic, and a matching aura took hold of the vial. If this is a trick, you will not leave here alive. I know. Don't take me for a fool. She pulled the stopper out, lifting the vial to her lips and letting a single drop fall upon her extended tongue. Her eyes closed as she seemed to be savoring the vital fluid as if it were a fine wine. Her now glowing eyes snapped open, fixing on him. Hmm. So, who do you want to be? The new noble guide looked around his home, his estate. His long quest had often denied him the creature comforts from his past. He washed the painkillers down with the rest of his glass of wine. He would have to take them every day until his ascension. A small price to pay, he thought. Guide stretched. He was still not used to all of the subtle differences in his new body. He reached out with Azora, gripping yet another page full of information from the stack. When the changelings promise to get everything a pony knows, they really do mean everything. 
Page by page, he was learning all he could about the original Noble Guide. He was not a bad pony, his only mistake was being in a useful position, one that would serve the new Noble Guide much better. He settled back into the plush fabric of his seat and let his eyes look over the beautiful towers of Canterlot. It made a nice change from the dusty temples and ancient ruins that he called his home for the past decades. He held up a single sheet of paper and examined his new contacts. Ah, <sighs> yeah. The right words to these fools and I will have them eating from my hoof. Standing, he got to his hooves. A slight wince was the only outside display of how painful his hooves still felt. <sighs> what I would not give to have an astral aspect. Those lucky buckers have no idea what it's like for those of us who can never teleport. At least his objective was only a few rooms away, forcing himself to walk normally, assuming a regal gait like the noble that he was. He had letters to write and servants to enslave. Canterlot is the shining star of Equestria, and we will show that we all stand for the ideals of harmony, Noble said, ending his speech to some of the most worthwhile nobles in the city. A few promised bits was all it had taken to get some useless noble to give up his slot to talk to Celestia tomorrow. He glanced up at the reporter for the Candlelot Times, still writing away in their notebook. Oh, yes. They would be quite useful. Good day to you. Guy tipped his head respectfully to the Pegasus. Oh, this would be so much simpler if I could just use my dark magic, but that could be detected. He lamented. And to you as well, noble guide. He offered his hoof to shake. The name's headline. Guide accepted his shake. If my meeting with Princess Celestia goes well tomorrow, I will have quite the story for you. He could see the bits flashing in the reporter's eyes. Would you want an exclusive interview? No fee required. No, I'm no full born yesterday. What's the catch? No pulling any wool over your eyes, I see. Good, good. You'll do. Guide smiled. I plan on helping the displaced Manhattan ponies. Now, I could pay for advertising to get the news out, or... I could offer you a free exclusive and get the information out at no cost to me. The way I see it, this is to both of our advantages and serves a pretty good cause, he said. Just not the one I'm telling you, he added in the privacy of his own mind. Noble Guide stared at the bathroom mirror. He was still not used to his reflection. His well-groomed black mane matched his impeccable brown coat, and his eyes were drawn to his new mark as every sense screaming at him that something was wrong. The new mark was a map with trails marked on it. It was not so different than the scroll he used to have, and yet just the sight of it twisted his insides. Dragging his gaze over to his own eyes, he focused. All of his immediate preparations were complete. In only an hour, he would be standing before the immortal solar goddess. It had been many years since he had seen her, let alone been in her direct presence. He shuddered. Even with as far as he had come, he was still only an insect before her. You have a plan. Her overconfidence will be her undoing, he thought, trying to calm himself. I outsmarted her once. I can do it again, he said with more confidence than he felt. His aura lifted the small metal box, a scalpel and a vial of dark liquid. Opening the box revealed three items. The first were two small pieces of the Shattered Queen's throne, each with glowing changeling writing on it. These would each block a single aspect of magic, one blood and the other dark. Lifting them by hoof, he placed them to the side. The last item, the most important one, was a single gem, so dark that it made even the deepest of nights seem bright. His eyes gazed into the seemingly endless abyss within. When he had first found the gem, it had a small amount of Luna's dark power from before her banishment. The power within this magical diary had not lasted long. He had to make use of it to escape Canterlot after his error in judgment all those years ago. But after that one taste of power, after how naturally he wielded it, he knew what his destiny was to be. Now, of more importance was the knowledge that it held, that alicorns were not born, they were made. That one fact had changed his life, setting his course towards his destiny. That was not all it held, but merely the most vital. In addition, it held images, incomplete plans, and partial memories of the alicorn of the night. Even empty of power, the information still remains. He had managed to start his path, acquiring spells and artifacts that Nightmare Moon and her servants had hid away as insurance against her defeat. When he ended up in conflict with another warlock, a powerful mind mage, he found the true power of the Dark Gem. The warlock's spell should have enslaved him, but instead it did nothing. His opponent started babbling, but the words were familiar, and his attacker saw Luna's memories. So long as the Dark Gem was in contact with some pony, any mind magic would be drawn to the gem, and the caster would be unaware. So for his plans, he had emptied the gem of Luna's memories, replacing them with a fake mind. 
It had taken hours, but bit by bit, he fabricated what one would expect to find in the original Noble Guide's mind. He had invaded, broken, and twisted enough minds over the years to know the sorts of details and imperfections needed to make it believable. His aura expertly manipulated the surgical blade, parting his flesh as intended, a trivial effort of his blood magic preventing even a single drop spilling. Lifting the dark gem, he pushed it into the wound. His face twisted and teeth ground together. Even through his daily doses of painkillers, it still hurt. As he adjusted its position so no pony would be able to notice it hidden under his coat, he felt something. A quiet whisper in his mind. Following it, he found the content of the gem, like an extension to his mind's eye. Testing it, he cast a compulsion spell upon himself. In the gem, he saw the spell swirl in and assume control of the fake mind. He knew what the spell wanted him to do, but it had no hold upon him. Then he smiled. Is this the real purpose of the gem? He had always wondered how Luna had raised a rebellion against Celestia, the master of mind magic in secret. Now he knew that she had created the perfect counter to mind reading. His gaze then turned towards the two changeling artifacts, and a smile dropped. <sighs> this is going to be painful, he thought, as he set to work implanting them as well. I have a small feeling that he might not get away with this, but if he does, color me impressed. Anyways, let's get on to our super impressive donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Courier Crew CI, Strix, Zar630, Narwhals, Raiden, Black Moonheart, Dospo, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Ender I63, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Hedge, Sky Uchiha, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitson A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, Divity Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, TLK Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakao, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hadrick Blencart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Daniel Beck, and Six of Nine. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.